Grumagat Hyanador. Senator Gavin, and you have eight minutes. Yeah. I'm going to defer to uh, my colleague, if that's all right, Cahillok. Very good. Senator Donald. Grumagat Hyanador, Senator Gavin, and you have eight minutes. I'm going to defer to my colleague, if that's all right, Cahillok. Very good. Senator Donald. Grumagat Hyanador, Senator Gavin, and you have eight minutes. I'm going to defer to my colleague, if that's all right, Cahillok. Very good. Senator Donald. Grumagat Hyanador, Senator Gavin, and you have eight minutes. I'm going to defer to my colleague, if that's all right, Cahillok. Carlock, I, I raise very much in support uh, of this bill. Um, I, I raise in support of the mechanics of it, but also uh, very much in the sentiment uh, of it uh, as well. Because sometimes uh, politicians, and we've heard uh, some of it uh, here this afternoon, um, and to be fair, I think uh, elements of this debate have been very worthwhile uh, uh, up until uh, this point. But Sometimes politicians fall into the trap of uh, showering young people with platitudes. You know this whole Mullinoiga against Chuggy see? Um, we have the opportunity to do something, to respect and embolden and empower and enfranchise uh, young people uh, today. So why wouldn't we take that opportunity? Why wouldn't we want to give young people a say in how this state uh, is run? Uh, because they are impacted by it. As many people have said already, young people can be taxed at 16 years of age. They can do a whole range of things. Uh, and, and one of the uh, contributors from Fine Gael made a point about how much actually the state impacts the lives of young people, whether it's through uh, the court system, whether it's through education or, or, or whatever. The state permeates right across every aspect uh, of their life, and yet they don't have a say in the policy direction of the government. And I think, for me, that's a great uh, shame. And actually runs contrary to the broader uh, popular opinion out there of people who want to see their young people uh, entrusted with something which I think would actually uh, inspire them to get uh, involved uh, in civic life. You can't teach people how to get involved uh, in civic life and in political life. You have to entrust them to go forward and be part of it. And I have to say, we've heard a whole lot today, and, and, and yes, we all go into schools and we all have schools come and visit us, we all go into youth clubs, uh, etc. But the vast bulk of young people I meet, you would think young people only exist in school. They don't have a life beyond the classroom. That they don't have emotions, they don't have experiences, they don't have a working life, uh, they don't have any kind of experience outside of the classroom. And I think we do young people a terrible disservice if we see them simply through that prism alone. Because I don't. The vast bulk of young people I actually meet are political activists. They were involved in the election in the north a few weeks ago. They were getting dressed up as crocodiles and going out and demanding their rights as Irish speakers. They took to the steps of Stormont just two days ago to say they wanted uh, a, a positive, equality-driven resolution to the talks process. That's the young people I see. That's the young people I know who are involved. Why wouldn't you trust them people uh, with a vote? And I think that's the core question of where we're at today. It's become my experience since entering this institution that Fine Gael and Fianna Fáil don't like giving people votes. Whether it's people who are 16, whether it's the diaspora, whether it's Irish leaders. citizens in the north. We vote for our leaders of our party, do ye? We vote every year for the leader of our party at an RNS. Yeah. If you want to come, party, I'll bring ye. I'll bring ye. And you know what? 16 <laughs> years we to vote for our leader as well. So we do it every year, party. We do it every year. It's not our parliamentary group. It's our entire membership. Every year at an RNS. One candidate. That's because he's great. And we don't need a new leader. That's why there's only one candidate. One candidate. Because he has our food support. Unlike the Fine Gael party, he has our food support. But we'll not be distracted by that. We'll not be distracted by that uh, party. My who for trying. <laughs> I, have to say, I have to say, I do have a great deal of respect for Senator Richmond's position. He was very honest, uh, and he told us, and he, and he was very forthright in saying that he wanted uh, to back this, but was unable to because uh, of the view of his party. But I have to say, he didn't explain why his party had that view. He simply said it was there. And I really don't think that's good enough. I think you do young people out there a terrible disservice if you simply say, you know, I would love to, uh, but I can't. Um, certainly if there is no credible or, or reasonable uh, ar argument coming forward, and I don't believe there is. I actually believe, as Senator Ruan touched on earlier on, that some of the establishment parties are afraid of young people. They're afraid because it's their policy decisions over the last number of years that have punished young people the most, that have forced them to emigrate, that has forced them into a position where they can't get a job, they can't get a home, and they're lingering on housing waiting lists. And I think that is the real crux of what it's at. Fianna Fáil, 
then go on to tell us, we save the Shannon. We save the Shannon. And then what do they do in the Shannon? They kick they everything down the lane. The they don't want to utilise the Shannon. You have an opportunity to do something. You want us to be a talking shop. You save the Shannon to make it a talking shop. Here we have an opportunity. Here we have an opportunity to do it. Am I going to be heard, Carla? Here we have an opportunity to do something. To do something positive, to do something uh, engaging, and to do something that enfranchises our younger citizens. So why wouldn't you? What's the point in saving the Shannon if you're just going to come in here and nod the head at everything that Fine Gael tell you to do? That's not the kind of Shannon I want to see going forward. I want to see a Shannon that plays a pivotal role, a Shannon that says to uh, young citizens, a Shannon that says to citizens amongst our diaspora and in the north, we cherish you, we value you, we're going to enfranchise you, and we're going to make you part of the political life uh, of this country. So that's what we should be uh, about. I just wanted to touch very quickly on one last point, and I'm actually going to split time, Cahirlac, with uh, Sander Gavin, who only wants a minute. Um, Sander Norris made the point about young people voting in general elections, and I think that's, that's fair, that's spot on. The only difficulty in that is it would have required uh, an amendment to the Constitution, something that we, unfortunately, as a Shannon, are unable to do yet. You never know what we could do down the line, but as yet we can't. Um, so this is about uh, uh, utilising, as I said, the power that we have to, to affect and implement uh, change. There was a bill in the last uh, doll uh, brought forward by Deputy Adams on, on that very same issue that I raise here very regularly of voting rights in presidential uh, elections uh, for the diaspora and citizens in the North. And part and parcel of that bill alongside given the vote, was to lower the voting age to 16. And the parties here and I, kicking it down the lane, voted for that bill. So what has changed? Well, what has changed since then that you said we trusted 16-year-olds back then in the last hour? We don't trust them now. New politics, same old story. Uh, you've just barely one minute, Senator.